Hello, everyone, and welcome to our all-new program here at churchmilton.tv called Dispatches. This is the first of a five-part series that we're calling The Demolition of the Faith. I'm your host, Michael Voris. The Catholic Church in America is experiencing a spiritual devastation unlike almost anything in our history. While it's true that the Bride of Christ has been faced with challenges throughout all of her 2,000-year sacred history, what we are undergoing now has never happened before, a worldwide apostasy in both clerical and lay ranks alike. And much of this is centered right here in the United States and is causing many of the few remaining faithful Catholics to begin to consider if the church in the United States can ever pull out of this death spiral. Churchmilitant.tv spent several weeks pouring, pouring over numbers, the official numbers from the church itself. Every year, the church produces a volume called this, the Official Catholic Directory. It's usually this thick, and it has thousands and thousands of data points of information in it. So we went back and looked for this for every single year, going all the way back to 1785, more than 200 years, practically the entire life of the church here in the United States, so we could get a very clear picture of the life of the church in this country. We looked at numerous categories that measure the vitality of the life of the church, around 43 separate categories. Remember, as recorded by the church itself, categories like the raw numbers of Catholics, the rate of conversions, the numbers of parishes, total seminarians, lay teachers, the number of schools, the frequency of the sacraments, and so forth. In short, all the markers of Catholic life and identity. In the figures and graphs to follow, we're going to illustrate the numeric difference between the highest point of any category and compare it to the number that exists today. Our data is from Kennedy's Catholic Directory, as we showed you, and Kenneth C. Jones' compilation of the Index of Leading Catholic Indicators. With all this in mind, we're now going to present to you the dramatic decline and loss of Catholic identity in America. So as we go over here to our graphics screen, Consider this graph that spans from 1950 to 2010. According to the Catholic Directory, the rate of Catholic converts from 1950 to 2012 has declined by 75%. And believe it or not, so have the actual raw numbers of converts, plummeting from roughly 120,000 converts in America in 1950 to just 75,000 in 2010, and this in the face of generally increasing raw numbers of Catholics overall. Between 1950 and 2012, the United States Catholic population expanded from nearly 28 million to almost 68 million, a 246% increase. If there are that many more Catholics in the United States, why are there so few converts? What caused this decrease in conversions, both in terms, and in terms of the rate and the raw numbers? A staggering data point when coupled together. And these are tens of millions, these tens of millions of Catholics on the official rolls. Do they really follow the teachings of the church as Catholics are meant to do? Or is that one explanation for why such, an in, such increased numbers of Catholics in the population are having so little impact converting their friends and families and neighbors. Makes one wonder, really, how many Catholics there are that constitute the Catholic population as opposed to the Church of Nice Catholics. We're going to dive into the differentiation between the Church of Nice Catholics and actually believing, actually living the faith Catholics shortly. But first, we have more numbers to show you concerning the Catholic laity in America. We brought up the decreasing conversions to give those uninformed a bit of a reality check as to the real danger we're in. These decreases strike at the very heart of the church's sacramental life. The fewer Catholics in the pipeline, so to speak, the less sacraments are received both now and in the future. For example, the, uh, the number of adult baptisms has decreased, not just the rate, but the actual raw numbers from a high point in 1994 of 80,000 to just 43,000 in 2012. That's a 46% decrease, almost 50%. Adult baptisms in America have been cut in half in just 20 years. What about baptisms for infants? Well, get this, the high point was in 1962, just one year after I was baptized, with a total of about 1.3 million. 
and now, during the course of my lifetime, there are less than 800,000. That's a decrease of almost 40%. So much for cradle Catholics, right? As contraception and abortion have become more and more prevalent and common and accepted among Catholics, it only follows that there would be less infant baptisms because there's less infants. Perhaps more than any other single cause, contraception among Catholics has taken a huge toll in destroying the church in America. In 2011, an impressive team of highly respected Catholic educators and researchers released results from a national survey they authored of fellow Catholics. They asked Catholics to place themselves in one of three categories that they felt best described their commitment level to the church. Those three categories were highly committed, moderately committed, and low commitment. Before we go deeper into those numbers and see what they reveal, let's take a look at the overview. In 2011, 19%, about one in five Catholics, considered themselves, identified themselves as highly committed. 66%, two out of three, self-identified as moderately committed, and 14% as having a low level of commitment. Tellingly, the percentage of Catholics who consider themselves highly committed has dropped 30% in the past quarter century. 1987, one in four viewed themselves this way. Now, it's one in five. At the same time, the ranks of the self-identified moderate Catholics shot up by 14%. No doubt about it, Catholics are becoming more and more indifferent and lukewarm about the faith. But when you dig deeper into these numbers, the reality of the damage the church has undergone is breathtaking. Now, in that group of Catholics who identify as highly committed, which according to the polling methodology means they said they attend Mass frequently, said the church was important, very important to them personally, and they would be very unlikely to ever leave the church. Those three markers people applied to themselves, and among this group, which again is only one in five Catholics in America, you might call them the cream of the crop, so to speak, get this. We have 60% supporting birth control, one-third believing that abortion is okay, and they can still go to heaven committing these acts and supporting these things. Consider this picture for just a moment. Four out of five Catholics admit they're not really highly committed to the faith at all. That's troublesome enough. But then, among the ones who do consider themselves highly committed, over half of them reject the church's dogmatic teachings. But just as the old saying goes, there's no such thing as just one cockroach. It's the case in the church that if you jettison one dogma, you'll jettison others. In this same group of highly committed Catholics, half, 50%, say that going to Mass each Sunday isn't a necessity, denying the Third Commandment and supporting mortal sin. Half say that being married in the church isn't necessary, and divorce and remarriage is acceptable, thus denying the Sixth Commandment. Half support women priests, and two-thirds say you can disagree with the church's teaching and still be a good Catholic. And again, this is all from the very group who self-identify as highly committed Catholics, the top 20%. One wonders exactly what they are exactly committed to, because it sure ain't the church. If this is the best, what's going on with the other 80% of Catholics, the other four out of five? So what's the picture here? In a typical parish Sunday Mass, half the people present there disagree with fundamental Catholic teaching. Half, meaning... If you support all church teaching, the odds are that the person sitting next to you right there doesn't share the same faith. Right there in the pew, right next to you. Reaching out to grab your hand and hold your hand during the Our Father, exhibiting a unity that doesn't really exist. So back to our screen here, our graphics screen. 60% of American Catholics believe the church is wrong on abortion and have succumbed to the culture of death. Unsurprisingly, two-thirds of this two-thirds majority of Catholics, a majority of the majority, believe the issue of contraception and abortion should be left to the individual to follow his own conscience. And get this, 53%, over half of them, believe individuals have the final say or should have the final say whether sex outside of marriage is okay or not, not the church. Let's talk now about the levels of participation in the sacraments by U.S. Catholics. 63% of moderate Catholics, the majority, 
in the United States just disagree with the teaching authority of the church on the necessity of the sacraments. Look here. Our church TV research reflects that between 2001 and 2012, just 11 years, the number of First Holy Communions declined from 900,000 to less than 800,000, a decrease of 12%. Remember, all the while, the raw numbers of Catholics, the guys on the official roll books, keeps going up. That's a loss of 1% a year. If the raw numbers of Catholics is increasing each year, then why is the participation rate in the sacraments actually declining? Why are 12% fewer children being prepared to receive the body and blood of our Lord? One of the most central beliefs of the Catholic Church, the real presence, meaning that Jesus Christ is really present, truly, substantially, body, blood, soul, and divinity under the appearance of bread and wine, this teaching is believed by only half of Catholics. What about weekly Mass attendance? 77% believe they can be a good Catholic without attending weekly Mass. And this single response reveals a whole huge underlying problem, not among the liberal and modernist gang in the church, the ones who don't go to Mass, but among those that are usually identified as good Catholics. They go to Mass and they don't have the slightest idea what it is. Continuing with the sacraments, the number of confirmations was at a high in 2004, 645,000. That has dropped to 618,000, a decrease of 6% in just 10 years. For a church who was given the mission to go out to all nations, this is nothing less than an epic fail. Confirmation is a sacrament of the church that is a way of committing yourself to the church. It's a Catholic's way of wedding one's self to the faith of Christ. Now, 6% less make this oath. And many who do make this oath, they fail to uphold it. Just press rewind and look what we said about the highly committed Catholics. Now we'll take a look at another sacrament which has become one of the greatest tragedies in America, the death of marriage. Back to our graphics screen. In the U.S. Census, the marriage rate from 1970, remember this is the entire U.S. population, not just Catholics. In the U.S. Census, the marriage rate from 1970 was 10.6 per thousand population. In 2010, 40 years later, the rate had dropped to 6.8%, a decrease in the overall U.S. marriage rate of 36% in 40 years. Now for Catholic marriages, by direct comparison, there were 417,000 Catholic weddings in 1970. By 2010, the same 40-year gap, the raw numbers had dropped precipitously to just 180,000, a drop of 57% and blazing the trail in the United States. So, here's the issue. For decades, the official, and we say official for a reason, the official number of Catholics has been increasingly, markedly up, but the number of Catholics actually believing and practicing the faith is in a steep, steep decline. How much longer before this house of cards totally collapses? Given this reality surrounding Catholic marriage, it should come as no surprise then that half of all American Catholics simply reject the church's definition of valid marriage. 57% of Catholics believe they can be good Catholics without following the church's teaching on same-sex marriage. 67% of American Catholics believe that they can be a good Catholic without adhering to the church's teaching on divorce and remarriage. This certainly puts things into perspective who's in the Church of Nice and who's in the Catholic Church, doesn't it? Everything in this episode answers this question. Everything. This is what it's all about, the Catholic identity. The identity of something or someone is a constitution of characteristics that describes one thing or one being. And yet many who do not possess the characteristics of Catholic identity persist in still claiming to have it. 61% of Catholics in America support women priests. And where do the Catholics of America stand in the big picture? 70% of Catholics in America view the teaching authority of the Vatican as not an important aspect to their identity as Catholics. So what can be gleaned from all this? Why this departure from the faith? Why call themselves Catholics if they act nothing like they claim? The Catholic population is 22% of the United States population, though a survey cannot calculate 
which of that amount are true to the faith, one can certainly estimate which ones are not. Have we lost our Catholic identity? Before that question can even begin to ans be answered, we have to ask an even more fundamental one. Do Catholics today even know what being Catholic means? God love you. I'm Michael Vorce.